Hi guys, Keith Arkenberg Farms. It is, oh let's see, second, almost third week of uh, April 2021. And I got another box in the mail so we could finish up our irrigation project. Right there, got a Netafin box. So that's more parts. Let me show you uh, the rest of the irrigation setup we have here on the farm. Now this box of goodies right here came from Berry Hill. They have the, at least in my opinion, the best sprinkler stands out there that I've been able to find anyways. Um, Rainflow has them as well with their single piece. These are two piece in case they break. Let me show you the different components of these and how we install them out in the field. So here's a fully assembled unit. It's got a stand, a stand clip that holds the riser. A sprinkler head for these inside of the tunnel I'm using the uh, XL minis with the blue and the field I use the green mega nets stand comes down to that little brown plug there that's what actually plugs into the sprinkler line and you plug this into it so let me turn you around here and show you all the different components and how to set them up. so when you order from Berry Hill you look up sprinkler risers these are the parts you'll need first of all you order the riser uh, assembly kit, I think it's assembly kit, a riser kit. It comes with your clip, your actual riser itself, which is this four foot piece of poly, with a plug on the end, female threads on top, and your plug for your assembly, or to plug into the line. This is pretty simple. There's a groove on it. Take your clip. It just simply snaps on, just like that down here a little closer then you also have to order your head separate because the heads are so specific to what you're doing in the tunnels I find these work best we uh, take the PSI down to 25 I'd go lower but those are just the ones I could find locally for my PSI reducers pretty simple hand tighten really nothing to it nope that just popped off Next, you need to choose, they only have one option, it's called the four foot stand option. And that is just literally a four foot galvanized rod. I believe it's 10 millimeter, I can't remember exactly. You can pick these up locally, a little cheaper because you don't have to pay for shipping. But it's pretty simple. You just take it, push it in. Now the other thing you're gonna need is a punch tool. That's what this is. This is actually the same size as this is in diameter. So we'll just punch this through our main line and insert the plug. Into the plug, we'll insert the stand. I'll go over in the field and show you. So last week, we ran the main line straight through the farm here and brought it out to each of the individual tunnels and field blocks so we actually have an irrigation head at each tunnel. Timers are actually going off over here. This is a tunnel I've already completed here. Got stands uh, in this one about every about 11 foot. That's just because I'm at 90 foot. If it's a 100 foot long tunnel I'd have them at every 12 and a half foot. But as you can see they're working really good. Over here I only have four stands set up. This is what I originally had set up with the mega net lines I drug in here. But this is just not quite enough water and you kind of get uneven watering. Let's go in here real quick. That's where we're going to be working at anyways. I'm kind of show you. Let me turn you around. So this already went off a little bit ago and I had to actually pause it. As you can see, we're dry down at the end, which I kind of would expect. So you come down the row, you can see right in here, it's really dry. And then, it starts to get wet again. 
And that is because we need more heads inside of these. These just don't give quite enough coverage. I mean, so ideally, you want head-to-head -head coverage. So that sprinkler head down there, kind of hard to see, sprays all the way over to this one with the same amount of coverage. What's happening is that they're both stopping somewhere here in the middle and we're getting uneven coverage. I might be getting a little water, but the main coverage is not going quite that far. So we are going to add these extra ones in between each of these four. Now, as you saw with last week's video, we brought a head up in each tunnel with a shutoff. We've since added a timer and then three quarter inch poly that comes down and runs all the way down to the end of the tunnel. From here, my original line was set in about 12, well, about 11 and a half foot from the edge. Now we're gonna set another one 11 feet in from here so we're evenly spaced down the bed. Installing these things are the easiest thing in the world. Make sure to purchase your punch tool when you buy the stands themselves. Then you just simply push and twist until you have a hole. This one's still got water in it. Take your plug, push it in until it pops. Just like that. Now you set your stand where you want it, simply pushing that into the ground, which you won't be able to see because I'm not going to move you yet. Then take this in and it's just a pressure fit. Now this being a pressure fit is great because anytime you want to move your assembly, these just pop right back out. I mean, it takes a little bit of persuasion to get them to go. Sometimes you have to wedge on them a little bit, but, oh wow, that's really stuck in there. But if you get a screwdriver or something, you just have to torque on them and they do pop right out. I just put that one in there really good for the first time. There we go. <laughs> Most of the time they come out real easy. Occasionally I have them pop out in the field. So you gotta kinda watch them as you go too. That's why I try to push them in there a little better now. Now I've got it all set up. I actually threw things downhill down here. I removed the end cap, which is supposed to be one of these self-draining plugs, which is great to keep the water out of the lines. So basically what I'm doing now is I've got it running, but they're not spinning because I do not have the cap on. The reason I don't have that cap on the end is because when I use the punch tool and punch through, it punches out a little circle which pushes all the way down to the end. I've actually found that it will clog these up. So I'm just letting it drain for a second. I'm gonna put this on and that'll fire up everything else on the end of the line. Okay, now we got full sprinkler system going. In case you didn't notice, that is not exactly the easiest thing in the world to do when it's fully pressurized like that. Woo, getting wet. <laughs> so, this one's up and going. It'll run, uh, see I've been running these 10 minutes twice a day right now. I'll kick that up later in the season. Um, each of these heads in here are half a gallon per minute flow rate. So I'm only dumping down three and a half gallons per minute, which is not a ton. Now, I'll take you out in the field and show you the other set, set up with the uh, mega nets. Okay, got a little wet on that one. So, out here in the field blocks, as you remember, I set up heads in the center of each of these blocks. From here, I got a timer. There we are. Got a timer. I've got a T. Right now I've got a drain valve on one side. I've got one set up over here because this is the only side we've got planted right now. And with these, these are the mega net heads. 
they are a different head altogether. They work better in wind in this kind of environment. What I did do though, over there on my main line, I've got it reduced down to 40 PSI. Because I found out at my working pressure of like 80, it was just too much for these and it kind of spits and sprays. That's why you need to do your pressure reducers on there. These on a 100 foot bed, go 12 and a half feet in and then every 25 foot down the bed. So we got four of them on these beds. These, like I said, work really great in uh, high windy conditions. I'll go ahead and kick them on real quick. The green heads I'm using are uh, one and a half gallons per minute, which is pretty good. I do about the same timing I do in there. So, I mean, across here we've got six gallons, which is twice as much as over there, but that's also protected in a tunnel. So we'll kick this on. And I'll turn you around and show you what these heads look like. These ones take a second to charge because I'm going uphill. As wet as it's been, it really does not need watered. But I just want to show you, there we go. And once they start going, you can see the spray actually goes up and down as it moves in a circle. They've got a much larger water droplet on them. And see that one sprays to that head. That one right there sprays to this head, which is perfect coverage. Well, hope you all like what you saw today. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you all. Have a good day.